Hello, fair warning. Uh, if you are watching this during the day, shut it down now because I will be drinking on this video. Wait till after Futur so that you can watch and feel comfortable. All right, I gave you a warning. I warned you. To be fair, it is like always so hot here and so humid. Milk tea. Mm. Mm, it's good. Now, I'm excited about today. I'm very excited. We're going to get uh, into the nitty gritty details and where things are less clear and they're more constantly changing with new fossil discoveries. And it's uh, this one of the fastest changing areas of science. Honestly, uh, it really is a great description of what science is. You remember at the beginning of COVID, uh, the experts were saying, you don't need a mask because masks will not protect other people, uh, will not protect you. Uh, the uh, viral particles are too small for the mesh size. That was based on our understanding of other coronaviruses. Then we got new evidence, we get the more studies. So we realized that the masks do protect others very well. And that the aerosol, the, the, the COVID was spread more by aerosol than it was by touching things. So no longer as important to wash all your groceries and everything, but more important to wear masks. Sci that's what science is. Science is true until we get new evidence. We always are pursuing something. We're always trying to understand something. When we get new evidence, we throw out the old and we take the new. And there is a lot that we understand about primate evolution and human evolution, but every year there are new amazing discoveries that completely overturn what we knew before. We're gonna explore some of those. But we always go wherever the evidence is. If I was to say, well, I think the evidence is gonna be like this 10 years from now, so that's what I'm gonna believe, that's not science. I don't make predictions, I'm not a Navi, I'm a scientist, and I go where the evidence leads. So we're going to look today at Primata, this is section 3 of the, your chapter 26, but uh, I'm going to save the entire bit on homos for ch uh, a separate lecture because there's just so much there and you know we care about it since we are those things. Uh, so we're going to wait on those. Now when we get into the primates. The first primates evolved about 85 to 65 million years ago from small insect-eating animals in the trees. I will show you pictures in the PowerPoint. Uh, so like before, read the chapter first. You'll be lost without it. Then watch this video. And then don't expect that you understand everything at the end of the video. It's okay. I'm going to be going through it in class just like we did for previous sections uh, with a PowerPoint so you can see pictures of this and it'll help a lot. Purgatorius is a mouse-sized looking, uh, mouse-sized uh, looking like a tree shrew, 65 million years ago. 65 million years ago. That is the first primate. Our mother. Molecular analysis indicates it's 85 million years ago, and fossils indicate a, a 65. So, why the discrepancy? Well. Uh, the molecular evidence is uh, uh, going to be a really solid way of understanding, and fossils are too. And they usually align to a great extent. Sometimes they don't because our fossil record is incomplete. And sometimes the molecular clock works at a steady tick, but it's not as steady as your clock on the wall or your watch or your phone. Uh, there is some... Uh, variance, some variability, a small amount in that. And so not always will the fossil evidence and the molecular evidence directly align. Now primates have grasping fingers and toes. And Whoa. see? Primate. And we also have binocular vision. Now, binocular vision does not mean that I can zoom and enhance like in the movies. Uh, no. Binocular vision means that I uh, can see 
in three three dimensionally and a bird cannot have you noticed that a bird is constantly there's this there's one he, he knows i'm talking about him you can hear him uh, they're constantly moving around like this why because the eyes aren't here they're here and they want to see all around them and they can't see three dimensionally now the nice thing about the bird is without the help of a video camera it can see its fingers all the way back here. It can see 360 degrees because the eyes are on the side. Except it doesn't have fingers. But it can see all the way back here and all the way to the front. But it can't see three-dimensionally because to see three-dimensionally, I have to compare the slight difference from this eye and this eye. Just like we, when we looked at astronomy. There's a small difference between the two where the two eyes are. And so, wow, ooh, that looks cool. It's three-dimensional, and the world is not a flat place. Which means that you can see how close that fruit is or how close that snake that's trying to eat you is in the trees. So grasping fingers and toes, binocular vision, clear advantages that we primates have. Lemurs and bush babies split off early. And then the Tarsiers. The Tarsiers are here in the Philippines. Uh, they are very small, like this size, but with giant eyes. Like they're this big and their eyes are this big. They take up most of the space on their head. They look kind of free. Uh, we were going to go visit them on the uh, island of Bohol uh, for our honeymoon. Uh, we went to Cebu um, and then the hole is right next to it, but the ferry schedule was like freaky early in the morning or really late at night, so it didn't work. And it's okay because the closest you can get to them is pretty far away now. They're highly endangered uh, and, and really well protected, so it, it's not a big deal that we missed it. I went swimming with sharks anyway. The Tarshiers are the ones who split off next. Then we get the Anthropoids. Now the Anthropoids are our group. Those are apes and monkeys. Anthropoid. There's a lot of terms here that you'll need to know. The first split, and if you want to know a lot more about these splits, remember that big, thick book by Dawkins, The Ancestor's Tale? It tells, goes into a huge amount of detail in all this, if you're that interested. It's one of the books that are on the recommended list for your free reading. Well, the New World Monkeys split from the Old World Monkeys and Apes 45 million years ago. So to be clear, apes and monkeys do not split. New world monkeys split off from the rest of them. Before that point, uh, we have old world monkeys and apes as one group. The new world monkeys have a prehensile tail. Like the monkey in uh, the movie Aladdin, uh, it, the, it's a tail that can grab things. Like our hands or the penis of a dolphin. It is able to uh, grab objects with it. The, uh, only the New World monkeys, the ones in South America and Central America, can grab things with their tail. Why the movie Aladdin that has all takes place in the Middle East has a monkey with a prehensile tail, I do not know. But they had a lot of errors in that movie. Old World monkeys have no prehensile tail, but... The old world monkeys are more like apes than new world monkeys. Monkey is not a monophyletic group. New world monkeys are monophyletic, but old world monkeys are in the same group as apes. Apes have no tail. With the anthropoids, we get color vision. So not just binocular vision in black and white, but in color and Opposable thumbs. Who's got opposable thumbs? Uh, this guy. These are diurnal uh, primates. They live during the day. A lot of animals live at night. It's harder for predators to see you at night, sleep during the day when it's hot. But uh, the monkeys, uh, the, these, the old world monkeys and the apes, uh, and, um, and the new world monkeys, we start living during the daytime where it's an advantage to see in color because if you've noticed, when there's not a lot of light, there's no artificial light at night, you can't see in color. 
you can only see in black and white. That's your night vision. And your night vision with your rods is better at seeing at night, but lousy at seeing in color. Now the apes split from the old world monkeys about 30 million years ago, and apes have no tail. We are then, we're going to fo be following along, similar to Ancestor's tale, we're going to be following along our branch. So we are in Hominoidea with the gibbons. It's confusing, but all of these groups sound very much alike. So listen closely, and I'll be giving you the spelling in class, but listen closely to the differences. We are in Hominoidea with the gibbons, and there are four species of gibbons that are still alive today. They're my favorite of all the apes. Uh, they have really long arms and, and legs, and they're known for swinging through the trees on those uh, arms and legs. The next group we have is the hominidae. Hominidae. That is humans, chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans. The gibbons have left us. Now, hominidae used to include just humans and our extinct relatives, that look like us, we've expanded this clade with better genetic evidence. So now we include humans, chimpanzees, bonobos, gorillas, and orangutans. We are called hominids. All of those groups are called hominids. 15 to 20 million years ago, our group deviates from the gibbons, and the DNA and other molecules contain a record of this evolution. Over time, more mutations occur. Therefore, the greater the difference in genes between different species, the more different those species are. And you uh, did this when you looked at the whale and the mouse and the chicken. The whale and the mouse are, have fewer differences in their DNA. They are more closely related. We can further look at this molecular clock at how many changes in DNA there have been and get a rough idea of how many millions of years it's been. This is important for the apes because, except for our species, there are very few fossils of apes that we have found. Today, there are two species of orangutan, um, and uh, they uh, all live in Indonesia. You see it in the Jungle Book, uh, the guy who's dancing around and living, um, uh, he's, he's uh, orangutan, uh, and uh, the natives of Indonesia, one of the most uh, different divergent groups on the planet, because they've been isolated so long, uh, they called him the old person of the forest. They thought the orangutan was just a different group of humans, a different tribe that spoke a different language and they didn't interact much and was really, really hairy. And when you see an orangutan, it kind of makes sense. I, I have to say, of all of the apes, they're the ones who look the most human to me. Our next group is Hominine. I'm not kidding you. All right, so let's review. We started off with hom Hominoidea, then we had Hominidae, and now we're in Hominine. Yes, uh, primate... Biologists have no imagination. Okay, so Hominine includes humans, chimpanzees, bonobos, and gorillas. The orangutans leave about 14 to 12.5 million years ago. There are two species of gorilla still extant today, the mountain and the lowland gorilla, all in sub-Saharan Africa. Next we have Hominini. Hominini. Eight to ten million years ago, the gorillas leave, and we're left with humans and chimps and bonobos. So now's a good time to talk about the chimps and the bonobos. We thought they were the same species for a long time. We now realize that they are separate species. Well, actually, uh, three separate species. Uh, and um, they look very similar, but they have very different practices. The gorillas go into harems, really strong uh, mole, bull, uh, uh, ma main um, male with a m bunch of females. Like, you know, uh, think the old uh, sultan's harem kind of idea. And they, they even use the same word in biology. The chimpanzee is like us. They mate for life. Uh, the chimpanzee uh, is 
uh, uh, one, they have pair matings, one male, one female, and they are our closest living relatives except for the bonobo. The bonobo, they just have sex for everything. I mean, like, um, I, I like you, sex, I want to have kids, sex, I stub my toe and I'm in pain, sex, we just had a fight, sex, are you male and female, I don't care, sex. So those are also our closest living relatives because the line for chimpanzee and bonobo splits from the human line and then it becomes chimpanzee and bonobo after that. So you can see our sexual practices are a mixture of those. We tend to have either strong pair bonding or people have sex everywhere all the time. And we have similarities to both of those groups because before they split, they split from us first. The next group, wait for it, is Hominina. Hominina, no chimpanzees. Now, Hominina is us, but not just our species. It's us and other humans from our genus and everything else from the beginning of the human line that is now extinct, but is also not human. It's us and our extinct relatives things that are more closely related to us than anything that is alive today. We had a very long speciation as early as 13 million years ago and covering a 4 million um, year period. Now, we, that means we are developing into a separate species from the chimpanzees and the gorillas over a long period. Go back. The gorillas leave our group 14 to 12 and a half million years ago. The chimpanzees uh, eight to uh, sorry, sorry, the gorillas leave 8 to 10 million years ago um, and um, the, uh, the um, chimpanzees and humans split around 13 million years ago over the course of four million years, but after the gorillas leave, we have conflicting evidence. We know the gorillas leave first. We know that they are more distinct from us. But what I'm saying is there is a period where the gorillas and the chimpanzee bonobo and the humans are all starting to diverge. And it's not like you just give birth one day and, oh, look, there's a human. I used to be something else and now it's a very gradual process. So we have this thing that happens more commonly than we used to think, but happened in our species called hybrid speciation. Two parent species are mating together to produce a new species. And so for the beginning of the human line, there's no humans yet. For the beginning of the human line, as it splits, it's splitting from the gorilla line and even more so from the chimpanzee line. And there is an overlap. Recent sequencing of the gorilla genome indicates we have 70% of our DNA in common with chimpanzees and not gorillas, but 15% in common with gorillas and not chimpanzees. Basically, for a period of about 4 million years, our ancestors are mating with the ancestors of gorillas and the ancestors of chimpanzees and bonobos. And we're all mixed together as we slowly diverge and become separate lines. And this is why the confusion, where I say that Hominini, um, the gorillas, leave 8 to 10 million years ago, but we start to see our line splitting from the chimpanzee line 13 million years ago because uh, there is very few fossils for chimpanzees and gorillas, unlike humans, and our DNA evidence gets all mixed up because there was a lot of mating between the different lines. If you're concerned, no. Humans did not have sex with gorillas and chimpanzees. I'm not saying that. The ancestors of humans, long time ago, had sex with the ancestors of gorillas and the ancestors of chimpanzees and bonobos when we looked nothing like we do today. So, our group, to remind you, Haminina, what are our traits? Our thumbs are more opposable. I can grab things with them. 
bigger brake. Whoa. Almost dropped the Kindle. Those are more fragile than a phone. All right, bigger brain, which would usually make it clear that you don't leave your Kindle right on the edge of your computer where it could fall. Uh, so, and uh, more opposable thumbs, bigger brain, and uh, we are also fully bipedal. Uh, let me demonstrate. All right, so gorilla. <laughs> Human. Look, I can walk on two feet. Isn't that cool? I'm fully bipedal. Now, for fossils, since the 1990s, the number of human fossils has doubled. And human is anything with the word homo in front of it, anything in our genus. We have better DNA analysis, better understandings of where the fossils are to be found. Humans are now one of the greatest fossil records in existence. Let me be clear. There are no missing links. Missing link is a fake idea anyway the literal creationists came up with it, saying that there's supposed to be something missing, there's something that's there, that's supposed to be there, and it's not. We don't expect the fossil record to give us every single moment. But it comes pretty close for humans. Uh, we have no uh, need for transitional fossils. We can see everything that's happening one step at a time. In fact, humans really, we have the best fossil record of any species on the planet. You could make an argument for only human evolution and nothing else evolved based on our fossils. It's really that good. There is a great deal of change and disagreement about how all the fossils are exactly related to each other. Uh, it's probably the most contentious and changing field in science. Uh, and like, are we... Is it one species or all of these different uh, types of fossils one species or one genus or is Australopithecus part of Homo? Is, um, are these other ones actually part of, of, of uh, our line, a part of the Homo line? Is Homo erectus, Homo habilis, which we'll be talking about in the next lecture, are they actually all Homo sapiens? Uh, there is disagreement, legitimate disagreement on those issues. Stephen Jay Gould, the author of some of the books in your recommended reading list, said each year before he begins teaching on human evolution, he threw out the previous year's notes in the trash. It changes that rapidly. I don't go that far, but I do have to do research every year uh, when I teach about this section to see what the latest results are. And remember, just like with the whales, not all fossils are ancestors. Many are cousins. You just don't find the right fossils. So we're not finding grandma and grandma and great grandpa and great great grandma. We are finding your second cousin twice removed and your third cousin three times removed, not usually in the direct line. I want to highlight a couple interesting ones. The first is, and I'll show you pictures in class, Sah Sahelanthropus. It's a genus, Sahelanthropus species. It had a flat human face, but a chimpanzee sized brain. This is seven million years ago. It's interesting because it says that our brains lag behind the other appearance. Um, we had a human looking face, but we still hadn't developed a big brain. It was only the size of a chimpanzee. Uh, it might be a common ancestor with chimpanzees. Again, there's lots of disagreement. It might be an ancestor just to us. It might be a split with the gorilla. So it might be more closely related to the gorilla line. It might be the first fossil we have on the human line, although it's not bipedal. It might be a hominine, hominine, hominina. Uh, it's really hard to say, and we got some really good minds, these big brains working on it, and having disagreements in the literature and the way it's supposed to be. And within a few years, they'll finally have a scientific consensus on this, but we're not there yet because I'm giving you some really recent discoveries. Well, the next one is Artipithecus 
Remetus. Now, this is also a new fossil, and it's close to the human chimp ancestor. It looks less like a chimpanzee than we thought. And so, again, um, we are close to the split before or after with the human chimpanzee ancestor, but it looks more like a human than we expected. Might be in Hamininini, might be in Hamininina. This guy's obligate bipedal. He must walk on two feet. Gorillas can walk on all fours. Chimpanzees, you've seen them in the zoos or in videos. They walk around on all fours. It's pretty convenient. It's okay for them. Not so Artipithecus remetus. Might have had a proto-language. I mean, very simple, like a human infant. Like, yeah, but, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, something like that. But looking at the size of the brain and the structure of the mouth, the bones there, possible proto-language. Indicates our common ancestor was more different from chimpanzees than we thought. Uh, this is um, uh, goes along again with Salhen Brahms. And this happens 4.4 million years ago. That's when we date these fossils for. So it's debated if it's the first homo ancestor uh, or not. We'll look at some pictures of this in class. The next group we have is Australopithecus. Now I'm giving you the dominant view is Australopithecus is not human. It's a different genus. Um, it's a, um, uh, the, uh, the, the group as a whole are ancestors to the homos. There are some legitimate scientists who say that Artipithecus should be included with the homo, with the homo genus. Uh, they're a major important early group, and we come from them about three million years ago. And by we, I mean all of the humans. It's unclear which genera they are part of. Some of them maybe should be part of Homo, and some of them should be part of Australopithecus. Uh, there is disagreement in the literature. They have biped characteristics. An S-shaped spine, like yours. When you sit up, you, you have a slight out curve and a slight in curve at the bottom. Unlike the gorilla, where I was demonstrating earlier, where it's a C-shaped spine. The spinal cord, like us, is at the bottom of the skull, not at the back, where it is for the gorilla and the chimpanzee. The arms are shorter than the legs, not longer. The gorilla chimpanzee arms are often longer than the legs, so it can walk around on the land. All of the apes, with the exception of the gibbon, who's more of a swinger, are ones who walk around on land, are common. The hands don't touch the ground when they walk, because they're not that long. All of this makes it easier to walk by pedal. Characteristics of Australopithecus are large brains for their body weight. That's important. Elephants have a bigger brain than us, so, do, so does a whale. Uh, but we look for a brain for body weight because that brain has to direct everything in your body. So the whale brain for its body size is around the same size as ours, maybe as intelligent as us, whereas the elephant brain is not. Uh, they were small, Australopithecus. We are closer to two meters. They were generally about a meter tall. Picture that in your mind. And the changes that happen in response to environmental uh, climate changes. Uh, there's a cooler climate with open savannas. And this uh, facilitates their evolutionary change, as we'll discuss in class. Australopithecus is a genus with at least five species. And I want to focus on just one that your book does. You can see pictures there in your book. We'll also see them in class. Australopithecus afarensis. Famous fossils with Lucy, uh, and in 2006, the Dikika baby. Uh, they were bipedal, but good climbers with small brains. And possibly Australopithecus was related to uh, the one that I just talked about, Artipithecus remetus. Artipithecus remetus. Hear the difference? Artipithecus remetus, and now we're looking at Australopithecus afarensis. The most important thing I think you should remember when we're looking at primate evolution is